Uh, hi, my name is Giovanna. I am currently a master's student at the Federal University of Paraná. And my major field of study now is salt tectonics. So it's a really different field, but basically studying how salt can deform other rocks. Hi, I'm Carlos Guedes. Uh, I'm an assistant professor at the uh, Federal University of Paraná. My main work uh, research field is uh, coastal evolution. So see how the, the coastline changes over time. Uh, Trindade Island is an island that's really, really far from the coast. It's roughly a thousand kilometers from the coast. So it's, it expands our uh, marine territory a lot. That's what we call the Amazonia Azul. So Amazonia is the rainforest and Amazonia Azul is that underwater rainforest that we have with lots of diversity. And Trindade Island is in that setting. So it's really, really far from the coast. And it's a volcanic island that represents the last active volcanism in uh, Brazil's history. Uh, right now, uh, besides being really, really far, Trindade Island is also only reachable for the Navy and some researchers. So it's an island that even if you really, really want to, is really, really hard to get there. It's really not that easy. You have to be authorized both by the Navy and the Brazilian uh, Research Council. When we, are, we went to the to the island, we have two options. We have to uh, we can stay there for only two or three days. Is the is the time to the navy to to load and unload all the supplies to the uh, to the occupation there, or you can stay for two or three months. Uh, so we believe that the letter found on these occurrences came from those both shipping and surface water currents. Uh, there is even one beach at Trindade that's called the Litter Beach, Praia do Lixo, because you find so much trash there, <laughs> so much litter there. In, litter from all over the country, all over the world, sorry. Litter from all over the world. So you can find things from Japan, things from England, things from the US, things from Brazil, things from Argentina, things from India, because once it's in the ocean, it's an open system and things just move around. As for this, uh, this occurrence, uh, we believe that the main litter that was, that became a part of these rocks are fishing nets. Uh, on the outcrop, on some parts of it, you can find preserved fishing nets. And they are the same color as the occurrence, and they have a similar chemical composition. We analyze them chemically, and we also describe them geologically. We as geologists, uh, we always uh, try to study, or usually study the natural things. So mineral is defined as a, uh, a, a natural occurrence in the rock is an aggregate of minerals. So we are describing rocks with uh, human, uh, with, with plastics, and plastic is not natural. And what we believe happened is when you have an increase in the, an increase in temperature in plastic, it tends to melt. And once it melts, it starts to go on the sand and on the rocks and all of those things that you can find in a beach environment and it starts incorporating them. And then when it solidifies again, it becomes something that resembles, really, really resembles a rock. So it's cementing all of those materials. The plastic is, is, is uh, got on shore on the, on the island and, and reworked by the waves. So uh, the waves are stronger. So they uh, collided with the rocks, they broke and they, uh, start to, to broke in small pieces and get the, start to to go uh, inside inside the sand and uh, inside the the sand cycle the geological cycle so uh, even if uh, the plastics the the nets are melted and form a new type of rock uh, they form it in a uh, intratidal zone so 
uh, it's always uh, with waves uh, shocking, shocking there and reworking and breaking. So these kind of rocks are, are going to be eroded and the the, the classic, the, the small parts of that previous plastic rocks are going to to get inside all the geological cycle, the rock cycle.